Hi, I'm Dr. Gonzalez from the Performance Place. Today we're going through an overdiagnosed condition known as plantar fasciitis. And by overdiagnosed, I mean that a lot of doctors and self-diagnosers all like feel this is a major cause of foot and heel pain, when it's actually, a lot of times it's not. Not all foot pain in the morning equates plantar fasciitis and not all pain within the heel also do not mean plantar fasciitis. Jumping right in, we're going to look at some MSK ultrasound images or some musculoskeletal ultrasound images of the plantar fascia. And I think you'll be able to see what's normal and abnormal. Even though you think you might not know, I think you'll see it. These images are cool even for me to see. I still get blown away by the amount of fluid and stuff you can see in an area to confirm a diagnosis. By the way, these types of images are very diagnostic, they're very accurate, and they'll help out with you and your doctor formulating treatment plans which are very effective and will get all your problems go away much faster. By the way, it's important to know these actually cost less and actually you can get much faster than the other types of imaging for this area. First, the history of this patient was, I've actually known her a very long time. She's about 65 or 70 years old. Again, I'm not sure of her age, but at the same time, I've known her for a very long time, only treated her once. And on her first treatment, actually, I only spent five minutes of doing myofascial release on the bottom part of the foot where the plantar fascia is at, and she was not able to recover from that for about a week. Now you might be saying you use too much pressure and you probably hurt her and that's why she couldn't come back or why she couldn't be treated again. However, I can tell you in all honesty, the amount of pressure I used on her foot was no more than what I can do just by doing this. And you can try that yourself, it's not very much pressure at all. However, due to the fact where she was so tender and could not be touched even with this amount of pressure, almost like you're just rubbing on the skin, the second session was a great reason for us to confirm her diagnosis, which was given to her more than five years ago. For this, we used MSK ultrasound. Here's her MSK ultrasound, and you'll see there's other findings on here which we're not going to comment on, but just keep in mind we're highlighting the major findings due to this video. As you can see here, the major thing we looked at was that we measured the plantar fascia, and in this case, it's almost seven millimeters big, which is about two to three times the size of a normal plantar fascia. Now, here's a normal study, and you can see that the measurement is very different, um, but also you can see how less angry the tissue looks, and I can say that usually uh, jokingly, that angry is not a technical term. However, by angry tissue, we mean that there's a lot of swelling, uh, distension, and what we call adenomous changes, and sometimes hyperemia, if you're a healthcare provider and want to know the definition of angry tissue anyways. After finding these MSK ultrasound findings, we decided to refer this patient out, and it wasn't a typical presentation that we have at our office. So we sent her to a local podiatrist, which is very good, and we trust very much. He diagnosed her with heel spur syndrome. And just know that heel spur syndrome, we won't go too much into it, it's treated a little different than plantar fasciitis. Sometimes they're commonly associated. Heel spurs don't always equate plantar fasciitis and vice versa. However, just know that because she was diagnosed with heel spur syndrome, her treatment was a little different as well. And if we would, had not known this, we would have continued to treat her, flare up her condition, and made everything worse for her. After her first session with an injection under fluoroscopy at the podiatrist's office, she was able to walk out without pain. And over a few months after that, she is still finding relief from that injection. The moral of the story is you have to figure out what you have before you treat it. And heel spur syndrome in this case, very different than plantar fasciitis, we have a very good outcome. And uh, patients are always extremely happy with plantar fasciitis treatment at our facility. However, heel spur syndrome, not so much. So it's important to know what you have if you're gonna treat it correctly.